Hey, it's Mr. Smith. Let's use Inkscape to make a webcomic. Now to start off, I have a landscape to use as my background already. So to import that, I go to File. I go down to Import. And I'm going to import the landscape I made in the last tutorial. That's kind of convenient. Let's hit Open. And there's my landscape. Now, this doesn't look so good so far as size is concerned. I can't exactly fit six panels of this onto there. So I'm going to scale it down. To scale it down, well, I have it already open over here, but to get to this window, you go to Object, go down to Transform. It's near the bottom, but not at the bottom. And that will make this tab appear on the side here. Now, I already have it set for 30 and 30. It'll normally be set for 100. Make sure you have scale proportionately check that's going to help that way if you change one let's change that to 25 for example it changes the other one to 25 automatically for you which is kind of convenient change that back to 30 hit apply and now this is 30 percent of the size it was before I can move this around let's put it right there that's a good spot and before I start duplicating this I'm going to add some guides those are going to help me out I'm going to start off by clicking up at this ruler up here and that gives me this red line here. This red line is not going to show up in my final version of this. It's only going to be a guideline while I'm working on it. I'm going to move it down to the top of this row here and then I'm going to click on this ruler on the side and pull this red line over here and move it to the side right here. That's going to help me set up my panels. Okay, now that I've done that, click on this again and let's duplicate it this button right here. And now when I move this over, I can make sure that is at the same height. That's too tall. Let's move that down a little bit. There we go. It's the same height as this one here. So it's going to look like it's actually planned out to be there, not just haphazardly copy-pasted and thrown together, even though I'm sort of haphazardly copy-pasting it. But never mind about that. Okay, let's select both of these. Let's duplicate them together and move this down here and put a little more space in between there we go and duplicate one more time move it down one more time and we are done now I'm also going to block off all of these white areas it doesn't matter what color you use but I'm using the square tool here to do that and there's a reason why I will show you in a little bit. All right, now that I've done that, I am going to hold down the shift key. Oh, arrow tool first. Hold down the shift key and click on each of the boxes I just drew and group them all together. So now it's one shape and I can move this around as I see fit. Now why would I do that? Here's why. When you start importing your characters, here's a little ninja that I was working on earlier. I've imported them into this version. When you move the ninja over, when you import them in the very beginning, they're going to be on top of everything else. Now, you can sort of hide that fact by making them be in the distance, in the background, and you can't really tell what they're in front of and what they're behind them so far as all the objects are concerned. But if you make them larger, because maybe they're the main character and they're up front and they're talking to the audience or they're talking to another character, well, that's very obvious that they're coming out of the frame. So here's how you fix that. Now that I have this object here that's going around, I can use that to mask everything else off. I'm going to click on my little ninja character. I'm going to shift click on this panel here, which is the one that the ninja is going to be in. And I'm going to tell Inkscape to move them both to the bottom. And now this panel below and this border are both blocking off my ninja. Now, if you don't want a black border or a blue border, go ahead and make it a white border. People won't even know. That's fine, but it's still blocking off the characters, so it looks like they're actually hitting the edge of the frame rather than going over it. Technically, they're going under it. Now, 
if I want my ninja to speak, I can add text bubbles. To start that off, I'm going to use the circle tool to make an oval. Now, I've been doing this before, so I already have it set up to do a stroke. I turn that on. I've got it set for 0.111 for the width. You know, your results may vary. You may want something else. The fill I have set for white. It's not empty. It's actually white. So if I moved this over top, it would block an area off. And you know, this is great, but I don't have that little triangle part coming out so I know who's saying the words. I can add that. First, I need to turn this into a path. So I go up to where it says path, and I click object to path. Oh my gosh, that's actually kind of convenient. So looks like nothing changed, but it has changed. Now what I've done is instead of having it be something that was made with this tool, circle tool, it's more like I made it with this tool here. It has a bunch of nodes in it. Right now it's got four nodes. If I click on this tool here, edit paths by nodes, you see I've got four here in each of them. If I click on them, as these lines coming out to determine the angles of these curves. Now, I'm not going to change any of those. I want to add some new ones. So to do that, I'm going to click on this little button here where it says insert new nodes into selected segments. It's going to be this segment where I want to add it right now. Uh, when I click right here, you notice how this one and this one turned yellow? That's my selected segment. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to hit that button once, and I have one new node right there. I'm going to hit it again, and now I have another node here and another node here. I'm just going to click over here so that none of them are selected. Go back, and this one here, right in the middle, I'm going to pull this one out. And now I have that little triangular bump that's going to tell me who's speaking when they start to speak. Now, obviously, this is on the wrong side for that person to speak, so I click on the little arrow tool here, move this over, hit this button here, that, which will flip it, and now this person's speaking. Now, I could leave it empty because, you know, ninjas don't tend to speak very much, or I could use this text tool here. I'm going to hit the plus key a few times to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Plus and minus can be used to zoom in and out. It's very convenient to do it that way, or you can go up to view and do zooming that way if you want to. They both work. I'm going to draw my text box right here. And my ninja is going to say sample text. Yeah, my ninja is not very imaginative. But you get the idea. And I can change the font size if I want to. I can make it smaller. I can make it larger. If I make it too large, it'll go off the edge and you won't see it at all. So you got to watch for that. I could even go in just select this and change it by typing in the number. Make it, let's make it 48 point font. Yeah, that's fine. I can change what the font looks like. But that's neither here nor there. You can leave it the default style if you want to. So that's the basics of it. Now I just need to add a few more characters, have them say a few fancy things. Oh, I need to give myself credit, don't I? I mean, this is my webcomic. I don't want someone else to think that somebody else made it, or I don't want people to wonder who the heck made this. It's got no credit on it. Let's make a text box down here. And let's have it say... Now everyone's going to know who made it. I can still adjust that. I can even change the colors of the fonts if I really want to. Or I can leave it just be black. That's fine too. So there you have it. Those are the basics for how to make a webcomic in Inkscape. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.